Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Heads up, March 13th through the 14th, we're going to have a total lunar eclipse. A research paper I found dated 2023 talked about tides and earthquakes. I'll give you a link to the paper down below, but it's titled Enhanced Tidal Sensitivity of Seismicity Before the 2019 Magnitude 7.1 Ridgecrest Earthquake. And that was in California for many of you that might not know it or know about it, um, those across the pond and in different countries. What happened was there was stress built up along a fault line there. And when uh, the tidal uh, pressure was at its highest, um, that's when the earthquake occurred. Some scientists agree with this data, others do not. The paper states that stress of tidal triggering is gradually increasing or did increase in the rupture. That area of the uh, fault line, the fault built up pressure about two years before the magnitude 7.1 earthquake, the main shock actually. About one and a half years before the main shock, they observed strong, statistically significant tidal modulation with peak sensitivity aligned with the uh, peak Colombo stress. Colombo stress is stress that is relieved during an earthquake either up or down the fault segments. More about that in a minute. People on the West Coast will see this week's total uh, lunar eclipse beginning at 11.26 p.m. on Thursday, while those on the East Coast will see it at 2.26 a.m. Friday morning. The total lunar eclipse will last about 65 minutes. A partial eclipse will begin about an hour and 15 minutes before the total eclipse starts. It's also called the Worm Moon, and uh, that is also mentioned in the Old Farmer's Olomec. Uh, the name of this lunar eclipse may be due to the emergence of earthworms around this time of year as the weather warms up and spring starts to act like it's coming. We got warmer weather like today here in South Dakota. It's close to 60 degrees. It's been really nice. But yet this weekend, we're supposed to have a whopper of another snowstorm. Other names given to the moon this month by various Native American tribes include the Eagle Moon, the Goose Moon. Yeah, I've been hearing uh, the geese flying, coming back um, from their winter resting places. It's also called the Crow Comes Back Moon, the Sugar Moon, the Wind Strong Moon. Yeah, we've had two good strong windstorms this month and the sore eyes moon why the moon will take on a blood red color even though it will be fully in the earth's shadow you still be able to see the moon illuminated by light from the sun that passes through the edge of the earth's atmosphere and bends towards the moon long wavelength red light traveling through that part of the sky will project a reddish hue onto the moon, giving it the uh, the color. So could this lunar eclipse cause earthquakes here on Earth? I don't know. There has been an uptick in the last few days, and that will probably continue after the lunar eclipse. So I would look at uh, current uh, seismic stress loading on different faults that could be triggered with a large earthquake or an increase in just the smaller earthquakes. The San Andreas um, accounts for 20 to 25 percent of relative plate motion. This steady strain uh, combination builds stress over time. Segments that haven't ruptured recently are thought to have accumulated significant stress, uh, stress. Areas of the San Andreas Fault that have um, increased stress would include the Southern San Andreas Fault from the Salton Sea near Parkfield has a lot of stress built up. The section between the 1857 Fort Tijon earthquake, which was a magnitude 7.9, um, and the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which was a magnitude 7.8, uh, is considered locked. 
uh, ever since their last major event. The Carrizo Plain to Mojave segment hasn't ruptured since 1857, over 160 years, leading experts to estimate it's overdue for a large earthquake. Stress there is estimated to be near failure threshold based on uh, reincurrence um, intervals of between 150 and 300 years. Also, the southern portion, especially near the Big Bend where the fault curves, compression of the crust shows high stress due to its complex interaction with nearby faults like the Garlock Fault and the San Jacinto Fault. This area is prime for a big one, a magnitude maybe 7.8 or larger. The Uniform California Earthquake Rupture Forecast, UCERF3, developed by the USGS and its partners, identify the Southern Andreas Fault as having one of the highest probabilities for a major earthquake in the next 30 years. That data was as of 2015. The probability for a magnitude 6.7 or higher event on that part of the segment exceeds 60% by uh, 2045. While the St. Andreas Fault often takes a spotlight, other faults show significant stress too. The Hayward Fault in the East Bay area is locked and overdue for a, maybe a magnitude 6.8 to a 7 quake. The last major rupture was in 1868. It is a major urban hazard due to its proximity to populated areas. Yeah, there is a lot of people in that location for the Hayward Fault. Another contender could be the San Jacinto Fault near Riverside in San Bernardino. It's highly active and stressed with frequent smaller earthquakes, maybe a magnitude 5 to a 6, uh, releasing some energy. But lock sections suggest potential for a magnitude 7 or greater. Another contender for an earthquake would be the Cascadia Subduction Zone uh, there in Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. Its southern end, which has been having a lot of earthquakes there by the Mendocino Triple Junction, is under immense stress. That area has a reoccurrence of maybe an 8 to an 8.9 earthquake every 300 to 500 years. Its last rupture was in 1700. But they're still saying that the San Andreas Fault Zone is still the greater threat uh, simply because of its length. 1,200 kilometers or about 750 miles and is capable of having an earthquake of an 8 or larger. So according to studies uh, using GPS and INSAR satellite radar, it shows the uh, strain rate there in Southern California is the highest, especially in uh, the area south of the Central Valley. So those of you that live there might want to be prepared. The USGS and CGS often cite that it has the state's most dangerous fault due to both stress and the potential impact. As for the most recent data, which I got for March 11th of this year, 2025, the San Andreas is the uh, best locked area for strain down there in Southern California. So like I said, you can watch either before uh, the lunar moon or after the lunar moon, or it could occur even um, a year and a half after these events from the uh, tidal pools, pole, I should say. Sorry about that. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.